Today's video, I'm going to be removing bottom paint off of this uh, Boston Whaler Dauntless. I'm going to be using the Total Boat st Total Strip, and um, I'll probably be following up with some soda blasting as well. Um, I've done some parts of this before. This is a view of what it looks like. There's layers and layers, and um, I've already done a partial strip on some areas just to test this out. And what I want to give you is a uh, view of what works and what doesn't. Here's an area on the back of the boat that I already did. Uh, as you can see, what I found is that there's an epoxy undercoat, which is fine. We're not going to strip the epoxy. Um, that would take a lot more than I want. And what I'll probably do is strip off all of the uh, blade of bottom paint. And then in the spring when it warms up, um, I'll probably go over it with another layer of epoxy. So the goal is to get the ablative bottom paint off. I'm not going to try to get the epoxy off. That would be a lot more than I want to do or probably incapable of doing. But I'm glad it's there because it does provide a protective layer. Um, once I get all the bottom paint off, I'm going to look to see if there's any blistering, anything like that. Do those repairs. And in the spring, we'll go over it with uh, probably another coat or two of epoxy, uh, epoxy barrier coat. The first thing you want to do is mask off the areas you don't want to get paint remover on. Um, Total Boat is very explicit saying that mask it off and uh, one thing you got to be careful for it, if it dries it's extremely difficult to remove. So we're going to go ahead and do the masking and then I'll come back and I'll uh, explain what the next steps are going to be. I've already got sections of the boat masked off. I'm just going to finish masking this off and um, get to it. All right, the mask is complete. Let's go ahead and prep the uh, paint remover. Tunnel boat says to mix this till it's a uh, even consistency. This stuff is thick. It's kind of like peanut butter. Now they say you can apply this with a brush or a roller, um, a spatula. What I found is that a chip brush works pretty well. You want to get it on an eighth to a quarter inch thick if you're only removing a layer or two. Um, then there's also the factor of how much time it stays on there. So let's get this mixed up. I did leave this in the uh, house overnight, so it's not cold. It's about 55 degrees out here. And it's got a good mix on it. All right, so I'm going to be doing sections. Uh, I'm not going to try to do the whole boat on at once. Uh, I think that might be a little bit too ambitious. And I'm going to apply probably about a quarter inch thick if I can leave it like that. One of the things I did when I was doing test spots earlier on in the year is I put some saran wrap over it so it wouldn't evaporate and make it harder to come off. Uh, I won't be doing that now. Temperature's kind of cold. Um, I think I'll be all right, but I will check it on a, on a periodic basis. Um, one thing I would recommend is wear all clothes. Um, I've got the crappiest clothes I could find and PPE, so I'll be applying it with gloves and eye protection just uh, can't be too careful. Alright, let me start applying this. I've got the chip brush. I've actually put some on the back already. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to reach underneath there and get to the first strake and then get this as well um, all the way to the front. And uh, that should be enough, I think, for this section. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Um, it looks like with this chip brush, I'm getting anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch, which I think should be enough for this uh, for the bottom paint that we're trying to take off now. About an eighth of an inch.
Well, that's it to the first strike. All right, so I've got a somewhat thick coat on about, I guess you could say a third of the boat. I'm gonna let it sit for about two hours. I'm gonna constantly check it, make sure it's not drying and see when it's ready to be removed. And then we'll hit it with some scrapers and see what happens. All right, it's been two and a half hours and it's time to start trying to take this off. But we're gonna check it first. And the way we're gonna do that The way I'm going to check it is just take some scrapes off. Now, this is what I'm doing. It's actually really not ready yet. So I'm taking it and smearing it back on over it just so that it has a, a little bit more time. So you can use a variety of methods to get this stuff off. Uh, if, if your bottom paint is right over fiberglass, I would stick with a uh, plastic spatula. I can get away with using one of these or one of these because I know there's an epoxy uh, barrier coat. You can also brush it off uh, if you have a stiff enough bristle brush. Um, and I even have some 3M pads. But uh, let me go ahead and start trying to get this stuff off. All right, about another half hour has gone by. Um, I'd really like to leave it for another hour or so, but it's winter and I'm running out of daylight, so I gotta get this done. I'm gonna use a metal spatula, um, the 3M brush, and a scrub brush, and uh, see how much of this we can get off. I wouldn't recommend the 3M on uh, if it's over bare fiberglass because that stuff will scratch. Well, let's start with this section. I do have gloves. I don't want to get this crap all over me. And eye protection because it will splash. I've got a bucket of fresh water and a hose on standby to hose it down. I'll do this because I dread getting underneath the boat. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that. And then the 3M pad. And again, I don't care. Uh, it's an epoxy barrier coat underneath of this. So. I got some spots that are stubborn, which I like. And just for grins, I'm going to try without the spray paint just to brush on this next section. And you don't need the scraper, apparently. So there are some stubborn spots, and you know, the choice is one, use the soda blaster. I got a small handheld one, which I'll probably end up going that route. Or reapply it in those areas, but as you can see, I'm kind of tearing up the masking tape, so I don't know that I actually want to reapply it. Or, we can hit it again with the pad. I'm actually gonna go with the brush. Alright, so I'm just going to get on with uh, removing all of this stuff. 
it's going to take a lot longer to get off than uh, it did to take on. So I'll meet you back here in a few. All right, so if you take a look, you can see that not all of it came off. Let me give you a close up. So especially along the tape line, it seems to have uh, been resistant. So there's a couple of things we can do. I can apply another coat on it and chisel away. The problem is that epoxy base um, barrier coat underneath of it, it's got dimples and grooves, makes it hard to scrape out. Uh, could try to power wash it, but I'm going to go ahead and use this little soda blaster and uh, see how that does to get the remnants off. Now, I've got a bunch of soda. If you're interested in the soda blaster that I'm using, I've got a video on it. You can uh, click on it right here if you're interested in seeing it. But um, let me show you what I'm gonna do to load it. And we'll be doing a lot of loading on this. This little table comes in handy for this. Basically, I've got this screen funnel because no matter how good it is, it comes out in clumps. I'm gonna load this up. And scrape it in. You see the clumps. Get disconnected and I've got a remote compressor, uh, DeWalt, um, five cubic foot a minute at 90 PSI. Probably not quite enough, uh, but it should do the job. So let me go double check the pressure and then we'll start a soda blast and see how that works. All right, I've got that little blast gun prepped and ready. I'm definitely going to put on PPE. This thing creates an incredible amount of dust. So we don't want to breathe that in. I am going to adjust this to the minimum amount. All right, so I got the soda blasting done. It does work. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, you can see it's got all the uh, all the black stuff off it. it. Surprisingly enough, it even took off some of the epoxy paint, which was really surprising to me. I didn't think uh, that that would touch it, but it worked. So, a couple of thoughts on this one. Um, I think if I had left it on longer and maybe it was a bit warmer and occluded it with plastic it probably would have took a lot more off than what it did um, i know in some of the test sections i've done in the past it worked perfectly fine didn't have to do any soda blasting um, i also could have applied another layer to it but being that it's winter it's kind of cold i decided against that and give the uh, soda blast a shot which worked out remarkably well one thing to remember, if you're gonna use a soda blaster, you better have a big compressor. I've got probably one of the biggest ones at DeWalt that you can get that runs off of 110, and it really wasn't enough. You have to stop, let it charge up, get some pressure going. Um, you probably need a 220 volt compressor that uh, has a high output, because those little blaster guns eat up a lot of air if you're gonna use them right. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit share and like, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.